All right. The next kind of hand that we want to think about is top and bottom pair. Okay, so that's when there's a card sitting in the middle of that board that you haven't paired. So, you know, as an example, let's say that you have a hand like, um, you know, uh, ace, uh, nine suited, and the board comes ace, jack, nine, you would flop top and bottom pair. So that's a good example of that. Now, the way that you play this hand is, again, not surprisingly, going to come down to sort of the texture of the board and how vulnerable your hands are gonna, your, your hand is going to be to those cards that can come on the turn. Now, if you flop top and bottom on a board that's relatively dry and doesn't have a lot of connectivity to the card in between, meaning there aren't a lot of straight cards that can come down in between, so the top and bottom is kind of far apart, and your top part of the equation, that top pair part of the equation, isn't vulnerable to a lot of other bigger cards coming, then you can play the hand pretty slow. Now notice that was a lot of ifs. So let me give you some examples here. Okay, there's going to be a big difference between, say, an, uh, an example where let's say that you raised with a hand like ace-8 suited, you know, and the board comes, um, let's say, ace-jack-8. Uh, well, this is a situation where the cards are relatively far apart. So any kind of, uh, you know, you're only really worried about one straight jar there, which would be, you know, a hand like 10-9. That we shouldn't be too concerned about. There's no suits on the board. We're not too concerned. And you have this thing going on, which is great, which is that you happen to be holding the ace. Now, that's a hand that you can play somewhat slow. So you can play that more like you have a set on a dry board. But let's change the situation just slightly. And let's say that instead of ace eight, let's say that you uh, raised on the button, all right, and you were just trying to steal, and you raised with a hand like 10 six, okay? got a call from the big blind and now the board came 10 8 6. Well this is a very different kind of top and bottom pair. We've got a lot of problems with this hand now, right? First of all, the 10 being the top pair on the board, what happens when a jack, a queen, a king, or an ace comes on the next card? Those are all things that can trump your top and bottom pair and give someone a bigger two pair. All they have to do is connect with one of those cards. But there's a bigger issue here. This board is highly textured with itself, right? Just the mere fact that it's 10, 8, 6 means that what do you do when a jack hits? That could make a straight. Seven hits. That nine makes a four card straight, right? Someone only has to have one card in their hand. Ditto for the seven part of the equation. So this board is actually very dangerous for you, and you shouldn't mess around with it much. So in that particular kind of situation, you'd go back to, well, you know, how do I play sets when the board is really textured? And you actually be trying to raise people off the hands. So when the top and bottom are pretty far away from each other, so there's not a lot of texture created on the board, and the top part of the equation doesn't have a lot of over cards that could hit on the turn, you can play the hand slow as if you have a set on a dry board. But when those circumstances don't hold true, when there is texture on the board and when the top part of your equation is low down on the end, now you should be playing that hand actually much faster.